Um, Hadley, now this is very interesting. About uh, I would say about a month ago, I received this this um, email, and I thought it was quite suspicious. And I remember uh, tweeting you and saying, um, "Hadley, I think you're you're sending me spam." And in fact, it was a preview of this book that you have with Kristen Swanson. Um, so you want to tell us a little about the book and about how long it took you to write this book? Um, well, Kristen and I uh, started talking at EdCamp Philly a year ago and came up with this idea of student superpowers and trying to almost connect it back to X-Men that each student oftentimes has their own special power and trying to think about that and it, Kristen put together a book proposal for Corwin and it was accepted and last June she called me and said guess what we have a book we need to write this summer so we sat down and using Dropbox and Google Docs we came up with the six superpowers that we wanted to focus on and the book lays out um, the rationale for each of the superpowers and then gives four lesson plans so that a teacher can really just take the book and teach the lessons. Um, there are assessments there, there are Pinterest boards that have all the worksheets and all the links that they would need. Um, and so it's a way for teachers, they could take a single lesson or they could teach the whole journey um, for, their, for their students. And so how was the process of working? How long did you and Kristen work together? And how was that process of working with somebody else? And where did you, I imagine that you met her, that she's part of your PLN, but um, that could be an assumption on my part. <laughs> Well, Kristen was one of the original founders of EdCamp Philly, which I also am, and so we've known each other for a very long time, but she has, um, she's now living in San Francisco, and so we did a little bit of everything in this collaboration, from phone calls to Google Docs to sort of deciding who's going to write this chapter, who'll write that chapter, and then last August I went out to San Francisco and we spent a very intense long weekend going over every single word and one of the one of the amazing things about our collaboration was that the goal was really like for so many educators it was really what's going to be best for the kids so if she had a better turn of phrase in a chapter that I happened to have written we once once the chapters came together it wasn't my chapter or her chapter it was our chapter. the whole book was ours and just trying to make it the best that we could and make it the easiest for the teachers who are going to use it. So it was a great collaboration. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the link there. I know it's corin.com slash books mm -hmm. um, book 242861, but um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put that in, on the site as well. Um, so what is, um, how do you keep on being inspired as an author like I know there are those times because I just finished writing two books myself and that was killer <laughs> um, I, I give hands to all of those who have written books because it is a very uh, difficult process I have found and so how do you keep yourself inspired in those times when you kind of feel like crazed um, how, how do you get relaxed well, for me, um, this is the first book I've ever written, and so I was writing it with a co-author. So when I was having a hard time, I, I, there was somebody to bounce things off of, and I didn't have to sort of be in my own space just doing it. Um, and that really helped. And I think that even when, I mean, I would assume when you're writing a book by yourself, you still need to keep those people that out there. That's the benefit of a PLN, is those people out there who you bounce ideas off of. Because I think that this change that we're in the midst of is not driven by me, it's not driven by you, it's not driven by any of us individually, it's driven by all of us working together and that as long as we keep that sense that we're not isolated, that it's about all of us working together, um, I think we continue to inspire each other. At least that's what I've found just personally in my own learning, that the more that I stay connected to people who are passionate about education, that wears off on me. I don't have to do it by myself. Yeah, no, I think what you said is really inspiring, and that's really good advice to start with somebody else that can kind of be there to support you. 
Now, I'm going to give a chance for the audience to ask you any questions. Does anybody have a question? You can go ahead and you can go to the futureofeducation.com slash rscon author and or you don't even have to go to RSCon author, but if you go in the chat box, you'll be able to ask any question that you want to Hadley. Um, now, I had a question. Is is this only for a specific, like, is this for elementary, or is it for high school, or what was the age group that you geared it to? We geared it towards an upper elementary to middle school. Um, I'm a middle school teacher, and so there was um, an emphasis on sort of the kids who are, who are already reading. Is, um, but you could easily, part of what I'm going to work on this year is trying to scaffold it so that you could be using it in a high school setting. Because I think that a lot of the lessons you could take now as an introductory lesson on a high school level and then build the next level up. And definitely, yes, I, I think so too. And you know, I think this is really rewarding too because right now there's so much uh, cyber bullying and our, our kids have such a difficult time going to school. So it's great to be able to have lesson plans and lessons that actually get them to build themselves and make them feel like they're heroes. Uh, because I think nowadays so many don't get the chance to feel like that. I agree. I think that, I mean, part of our goal was to shift the power to the students so that they could take control of their learning and it wouldn't be about the teacher having all the right answers. It would be about students learning how to ask questions that there isn't a single right answer, that there are multiple answers and to really follow their own passions um, and learn how to do that. Learn what does it take in this world to ask questions, to find resources and to create from what you've found. Now, if they wanted a signed, a personal signed copy from you, are you going to be at any conferences or any ed camps that they should know about? Uh, well, I'll definitely be at the next ed camp, Philly. We're, there's also a, um, the PAIS is um, in October in, in, um, in Philadelphia. We'll be there. I'll probably be, I mean, I'll, I'm sure to be at Educon. I'll be at the, Ameri um, the Association of Mid-Level -level Education. I can never get that job title out, um, which is in Nashville in November, I think. So we'll be around. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to, if uh, maybe Tom Whippy, do you want to join us next? That would be really great. Or I see that Joan is uh, also um, joining us as well. So maybe Joan actually wants to go because I know she's in a rush to see her brand new, um, it's, it's your uh, grandson, Joan? Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, it's my grandson. He's uh, eight and a half months old and very busy and fun right now. And uh, so any moments that I get with him are great. I don't know if anybody else wants to go first. That's fine. I have about 20 to 30 minutes, but Whatever oh, you would like, that's Chad. okay. Um, well, we can go ahead, and that way you can get off and um, have fun and enjoy. He's so cute. I've been seeing his face. <laughs> He's so adorable. I love the pictures. Um, but you just finished writing a book as well, um, and this is not your first book, though, right? Actually, it's not my first book. Um, I wrote a teacher book for Scholastic several years ago. I think it was published in 2009 and it's a um, super sight word songs and mini books book and so it was born out of my early days of teaching and seeing that my kindergartners could learn how to sing color words but not sight words because we had songs to teach the color words so um, I got some criticism. I was a first year, second year teacher and uh, the teachers around me didn't really recognize um, the value but the kids loved it and I took it to every school I went to and had my nieces and nephews record the songs and then Scholastic uh, wanted to publish it so they re, uh, recorded it. So uh, why this book now? I've heard a lot of talk about it and a lot of teachers have been saying that it's really inspiring. So um, it's been a few years and so what gave you the inspiration for this book? So actually, um, the inspiration came because I'm on a list, a mailing list for ASCD, and I get to uh, review books. And so in the fall, I think it was like October, I got an email and asked me to review some titles, and I usually do. And um, 
I, I wrote back and I said, can I have your submission guidelines? Because I'm really curious about what it takes to write an arias. Because I thought, oh, it's short form, 10,000 words. Maybe I could do that. And so uh, it was a really, really quick process of um, talking with an editor about some ideas that I had and then submitting a proposal. And so from October to April was the timeline, and it was done. So um, that was really appealing to me that I would have really tight guideline. And, uh, and it's all stuff I've been writing about before, but it had to be original material, so I couldn't use any of my blog posts, but I could kind of go off of those. So. Um, it's it's just things I've been interested in for years. And what key points do you hope that your readers will take from your book? Okay, so briefly, my um, the title is Encouragement in the Classroom, and it's really about taking um, principles of positive psychology, principles of appreciative inquiry, and seeing the things that we already do that are effective in the classroom, how we use humor, how we use novelty, how we use routines to keep kids safe but also break them when, when it can make learning exciting. So really it's about kind of stepping back, evaluating your own environment that you provide for students and finding those successes and duplicating them. So I want people to understand that this isn't a magic uh, book of answers, it's just a way of looking at the work that you do in a positive light, seeing where it goes well, doing more of that and maybe tweaking little things here and there so that your kids actually will take on challenges and be more empowered as learners. That was my goal. I really wanted this book title to have efficacy in it. But encouragement is all part of that. And um, so. Now, one of the great things is that if you want to hear, we're doing short little interviews, but if you want to hear more about this, uh, Joan is actually presenting about it on, um, <laughs> she's presenting about it at RS Con, so um, you can talk to her live and she can tell you about it, and maybe if you order a book, she can even sign it live for you <laughs> during her presentation. Do you want to tell us when your presentation is? Yes, my presentation is Saturday, um, 11.30 Pacific time, I believe, <laughs> and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it, and I appreciate the opportunity to share with people and really have us all learn from each other, because we all have examples that we, I think, forget about in the, in the drama and the chaos that we sometimes find ourselves in in the classroom. Well, yes, definitely, I agree. Um, if you would like to ask her a question or any of the authors, you're more than welcome to just um, in the chat box at thefutureofeducation.com. Just go to the very bottom and you'll click. You'll see something that says main room. Just click it and you're going to see a bunch of educators already talking. So um, if you want to ask a question, you're more than welcome to. And we are going to go ahead and go to the next um, author while we're waiting. Um, we'll go ahead and go to Tom Whitby because this is actually kind of funny. I just got a message on my uh, Hangouts on the air and it says, Tom Whitby. Be block Tom Whitby. So, um, <laughs> and it says, uh, "Do you want to block Tom Whitby as well?" <laughs> so, um, before you block yourself, Tom, uh, we should probably interview you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Joan. And um, are you going to any conferences? Um, or anywhere my, my that we might be able to run into you? My life is going to conferences. I, I, that's all I do anymore. Um, I, I will be at the uh, BLC conference coming up in um, C14 up in Boston. And then after that, I'm headed to um, Indiana for the Clark County conference uh, for Clark County schools. And then I will be going off to an EduBlogger uh, conference for um, Edutopia bloggers in um, the Luke Skywalker Ranch. It should be interesting. Okay, awesome. And uh, Tom, you just recently uh, finished writing a book as well, and you have a co-author as well, uh, Stephen <laughs> Anderson. Um, yes. And can you tell us a little about um, the Connected Educator? Now it's not out yet, but they can pre-order it, right? Yeah, it's um, it's actually uh, in a series of books, Corwin. 
uh, publishing decided to come up with something similar to the Aries series, uh, the Aries series. Uh, they're all short form books. Um, the books that are coming out right now, there are nine of them. They'll be coming out starting in August, I think August 22nd. It can be pre-ordered right now. And um, pretty much every one of those authors are people that, that we all know from the connected community of educators. Uh, many of us started off as, as tweeters and then became bloggers, and now we're writing books because we all have so much to say about what it is we've learned over these last years. In this particular book, I worked with Steve Anderson, known as Web 2.0 Classroom, for all of you out there, the connected community. Um, Steve and I worked on this for a couple of months. Uh, it's called The Relevant Educator, and uh, it's, it's pretty much the reasons why people should be connected and how to connect, and we did it uh, very simply. We didn't use any educational jargon. We didn't use any... Um, uh, Explained it step by step. The people that we're trying to get to read these books are, are not necessarily connected educators. We're really trying to get this to the unconnected educators so they can become connected educators. So everything kind of had to be spelled out. Um, and if you are familiar with the way Steve writes or the way that I write, that's pretty much what we do all the time. So how did you guys actually co coordinate with each other? So Heather was saying that she used Google Docs. What did you all use? Well, we, we did the same thing. We used uh, Google Docs, and um, we were on the phone quite a bit together. Uh, the, the, the best part about working in a series like this, though, is that we actually got to bounce our chapters off of uh, other authors in the series. Uh, Peter DeWitt is kind of heading up the whole thing. You, you may know Peter DeWitt from uh, Education Week. Um, on Common Ground is his blog. Uh, he headed up the entire thing, so much of what we did, we bounced off of him as well. Uh, and when we finished the book, we were able to give it to two of the other authors from some of the other books to take a look at. Um, I, I had ours. Uh, in fact, who also has a book in the series. She and Hadley, she and Hadley had written a, a book about um, Ed Camps, and and that book is in the series. So. It's you know working with 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 more than than one person in writing a book you know where you've got a, a committee of people that you can use as sources and 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 sounding boards is just a great way to do it. And did you? How did you and Steve um, sort of get over the pressures? How did you all relax and kind of have a little <laughs> bit of fun too? Because let me tell you, okay, so we have we all know each other quite well, being the founders of EdChat. And the first time I met these guys in LA, we were at a, a restaurant, and I still have a picture of um, you with a spoon on your nose. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you guys had uh, plenty of fun moments there. Yeah, well, it's, it's you know it's great to be able to, to work with people that you're. Personal friends. Uh, I, I don't get to see you as often as I like, but Steve, I get to see you a little bit more often. Uh, as a matter of fact, we just celebrated the uh, the Fourth of July weekend together. I had. Uh, Steve Anderson and Adam Bello and their families out to our beach house, and um, we talked about education for as as the hurricane blew over us. It was a very small hurricane that went by, so we were 16 hours sitting in a house drinking wine, talking about education. Uh, it was quite enlightening. I can imagine. I would have liked to be part of that uh, conversation <laughs> as well. Now, do you now that you've been in this book, do you foresee yourself uh, writing another book, or are you already, in fact, writing another book? Yeah, uh, Corwin has asked me to write another book, and um, I'm starting it uh, pretty soon. So uh, I don't know if it's going to be part of this series again. I would imagine it would be. It's probably going to be a short form book, but I'm writing about um, um, collaborative learning. And, and where it fits into what we do today. Oh, well, that's awesome. Um, and do you have any upcoming conferences that you'll be attending as well, or any camps that uh, maybe in the future? Well, when does the book come out? I know uh, you the, can pre-order it right now, but when yeah, does it actually? So it's uh, probably a, you know, a little over a month away. And uh, the, the first four books of the series will be available at that, at that point. 
the entire series, I think, is uh, can be bundled for those people who want to buy the the entire series. So they've got a it, the price range is, is pretty good. Um, our book, I think, is going to be somewhere in the area of uh, twelve or thirteen dollars. Right now, the pre-sale is. I think at about ten, so it's oh, pretty inexpensive. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good deal if they get in now. Then. <laughs> yep. 